Right then, so continuing off from where we last were, now we can actually set up our meetings. So how I like to actually do this is get rid of the meetings that are already there because I don't want them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press delete here on the 60 minute meeting. I'm going to press delete here on the 30 minute meeting. And the 15 minute meeting, I'm actually going to keep that because we do do a free 15 minute call in our business. Um, and I'm going to set that up as well. But first off, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this and I'm going to press edit or I could do create new booking type. If I do create a new booking type, just going to bring it up like this. And if I just go back screen, and if I just press edit on one of the booking types, it's going to come up with some information already in there. So we're going to be using it from this screen. So I'm just going to rename this based on my power hour, actually. So I'm just going to call this a power hour. And then in here, we're going to put a description. So actually, I'm going to get my description just from my actual Calendly that I use. And then we can get that. I use Calendly for a different reason, which I cover inside my um, other video right here. There we go. So we've got all that put in there. Um, put as much information or as less information as you want. When it says group bookings, this means that you can allow people to book the same time slot. So you might have like a session where four people can book in. But we don't need to worry about that on this. Now, I want it to be by an online video conference. And then I want to choose Zoom from this drop down. And what it will do is generate a Zoom link for me, which is exactly what I want it to do. I don't want it to be me having to go ahead and actually do the Zoom scheduling myself because that's just not saving us time. Why am I using TidyCal? And then the duration. So the duration for me is 60 minutes long and the minimum meeting padding. So how much time do we need to the side of it? So I need like 10 minutes, maybe before and after for the meeting. So I'm going to put 10 minutes. People can book 60 days in front, which is two months. And how much, you know, what amount of time do we need? So I need at least, actually I need more than 24 hours. I need at least 36 hours notice for me to actually be able to go ahead and be confident that I've got enough time to set myself up ready for this power hour. Of course, you might choose to change this if you want to. Um, totally up to you. There's no right or wrong answer. Then we've got our actual schedule here that we can put in. So with the schedule, we basically put in what hours we want to work. So Monday, I don't want no calls. I don't want no calls on Friday, but we'll have them Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. But I know on Tuesdays that, I, well, in any day, really, I actually only go between 9, you know what, 10. I don't want to be disturbed before 10. So 10 a.m. and then to 12 p.m. because that's my lunch. And then I'm on tech clinic, so nothing else can happen. On a Wednesday, I want it to be, again, 10 o'clock. That's the earliest I'm happy to do. And I can go up to 3 p.m. But it might be you want to do it in window. So I could say I want that to say 12 p.m. And then I want to go from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. So I've got that hour break in the dinner, if that makes sense. Then you do Thursday the same. So Thursday again, I'm going to put 10 a.m. I'm going to put 12 p.m. And then the afternoon, I'm busy. Happy days. Actually, no, I don't be busy in the afternoons. What am I talking about? So here we go. So let's change that. I've pressed update by accident, by the way. I pressed enter. So just change that. Job done. Next, we can ask the questions that we want to be able to ask for people to fill in, which is very handy. So I, of course, want to add a question in. So I want, they're already going to put their name in. We're already going to put their email in. And then what I want to do is, I'm actually going to copy these from my other one. I want to ask them some questions such as, what do you want to achieve in this power hour with me? And they can have a long text box, which means they can put in more than one information. Um, then we've got, Another question here. So this one, I usually ask what platforms they use because I obviously cover tech and that can be a long text as well. Then I've got, where did you hear from us? So I'm going to put that in there. And then what I can do on this one is I could choose to have radio buttons so they can only select one. So I could then put LinkedIn, um, Facebook, Instagram, We've got YouTube, I have referral, and I've got worked with me, you before, and I might have other. There we go. So I could have different selections on there. Um, something I like to recommend if you are doing a Zoom call is to have something very similar to this where 
I have a question where I'm saying, please really read of read all the following. Booking your session will be confirmation of the below. And then I have some check boxes and I have these. So number one is I understand that session will be on Zoom and I need to use a desktop. And then I have another one, which is if I'm more than 10 minutes late to session, my session's cancelled. That's how it's going to be. Job done. So once we've got our questions set up and we're happy with them, then it comes to the email reminders. So current low tidy count, as I'm recording this on the 7th of February 2023, you can't customize the confirmation. But what you can do is you can customize the actual reminders. So here we've got hello and it puts their name in there. Um, so you can choose to put their name, contact email. There's some certain things you can put in. And then it's going to come up with a booking title. So in my instance, it would say Power Hour. And then it would give them some more information. So obviously, you can flesh this out and more information with what you want to do. And when do you want these reminders to go out? So you can set it to go out twice. So you can set, I like to set mine to go out um, a couple hours before. And then an hour before. Uh, tw yeah, we'll do, yeah, we'll do three or six hours before. Then if you want to, you can make it so it redirects them to somewhere else. So in this instance, if that would be like a thank you page, maybe where it tells them to follow you on social media or to fill in a workbook or anything like that. But I'm going to leave it blank for this time. And then next up, we've got charge for this booking. So I'm going to tick that because I want to charge this booking and I want it to be by Stripe. And the price is £177 because that includes the VAT. Then, if you want to make it private, this means it will not show on your booking page here. And yet, but if you gave the direct link to someone, then people would find it. Whereas I'm happy to this be on there. And then this one is about if you want it to display it on the booking types directory, might as well tick it. You never know, may get some publicity out of it. And then also you can select what kind of call it is really. So this is a business call. Once we've done that, all we need to do is press update booking type and it will update the booking type for us. So now if I click booking types at the top and I press on this link here, so it opens it up. This is what it would look like to other people. So other people would see my profile name at the top, the name of a call, how long it's for, how much it costs, all the text that I've put in there. And then they would go ahead, book the time slot and it would come up with this saying, please put in your name, your email, what do you want to achieve with the Power Hour, platform you're currently using, etc. They put their card details in and they will go ahead and press book event. That will tell me, it will tell them, job done, we're happy, happy. So if I was then to go ahead and make another call, more than likely what I would do is I would press clone. And then that means it clones it up for me, saves my settings. So this might be a new client meeting call, for instance. I'm going to leave the link as that. The text, obviously, is going to change. So let me get the text and I can put my text quickly in there. Let's have a look. I'll put my new text in there. Again, I'm going to keep all the settings the same, apart from this is going to be a 15-minute call. And actually, we need more padding in between these because we do a lot more follow-up on these calls generally. How far ahead? Really, 30 days. Don't want to be doing 60 days. I'm going to keep the same availability in there, though. And obviously, the questions would change. So I'd delete these questions out. I'm not going to do them on this call, but I'd add some questions in. Um, I'd add a new email reminder in there. Put a new one in. You can add another one in there. So you've got the same one, obviously. Get theirs one hour before. We'll have one for six hours before. Job done. Don't need to charge this booking bar. Don't want to display this on the booking types directory. And I would press update booking type. Job done. And that's it. So now I've got these two meetings. So now if I actually look at my bookings page, it looks slightly different. So now we've got book now for 177. Oh, I've got book now because that's obviously three call. Gives you a bit of a brief description on here as well. And also here, so you can see the brief description on that as well. And that's it. That's all you need to do to set it up. This is how we use tidy cards, nice and simple. And I will cover some more bits in some other videos, but hopefully in these two lessons here, you've managed to be able to set up yours. And of course, new features are coming out all the time. So thank you very much. Please make sure you follow us and subscribe to the channel. And if you enjoyed the video, please leave us a comment and a thumbs up too.